On your marks, get set, go! Hi, my name's Steve from 1233D. Today, we are gonna be revisiting the Perusa Core 1. We did an unboxing on this machine when we first received our model. We've really, really put the machine well and truly through its paces. We've even taken it to exhibition that we attended recently. We had it on display printing while we were there. We love it. It was a struggle to get it from Chris out of the studio to actually be able to get my hands on it and use it myself so we could provide this review because he is such a bad man. Anything galaxy black and orange, he treasures like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. My precious. Anyway, I shall move on. The key stats for this machine are as follows. So we have a bill volume of 250 millimeters left to right, 220 millimeters front to back. And on the Z, we are capable of printing up to 270 millimeters high. The nozzle temperature will reach a maximum temperature of 290 degrees, while the bed will heat up to 120 degrees. Ideal for those more exotic filaments like PC, nylon, so on. It's advertised with a heated chamber. That isn't strictly true. What is true is the fans that are on the back will control the chamber temperature. So any ambient heat that is generated via the heat bed and the hot end will be controlled via the fans. So if you're printing with ABS that requires a higher chamber temperature, 50, 55 degrees, basically what the machine will do is it will heat soak first before you start printing. So it'll heat the bed up. It'll basically pick up the temperature from the thermistor inside the chamber and regulate that temperature by turning the fans on and off as required to maintain a stable temperature within the chamber, which is absolutely superb and works faultlessly. We have a 3.5 inch touch screen display. This has two functions. You can either use the rotary knob where you twist and click, or you can use it as a touch screen. So you tap on the icons on the screen. Also on the side of the screen, you then have the USB slot so you can load your files, all that good stuff. Flash firmware, all that jazz. Design and build quality of this machine are exceptional. It has really, really been well thought out. You've basically got a Core XY machine encased with a steel exoskeleton the recesses on the sides so this side you have your spool holder with a nifty little bowden tube on the opposite side you have a void which you can print accessories for i.e if you want to put your build plates in there tools whatever else find those files on printables you have a high density polymer door the door can be open to 180 degrees and the hinges can be flipped so right, i shall open it up so you can see that is the end stop and as you can see, it is acrylic perspex. It is self-closing and there is magnets on it as well. And if you wanted to, depending on the orientation where you were setting the machine up, you can literally take the hinges off, flip them round, put them on the opposite side so the door opens the opposite way round. That is entirely up to you. We were lucky enough to see this at the unveiling at Formnex and Joseph, you know, categorically claimed, we have an Uncle Jesse proof door. As a lot of you will be aware, Uncle Jesse, his infamous video where he swung open the K1 or the K1 Max door, which is glass and it shattered everywhere. And he then proceeded to violently slam the door and even punch it. We have the same extruder as the Mark IV-S, so it's the next extruder extruder. The slight variant between this and the Mark IV-S extruder, the actual fan shroud on this is slightly differently designed, still printed in PCCF, straight from Prusa. So if you wanted to customize those little bits and make them a different color or do whatever you want with it, because you can. Rear fans at the back. So we've got dual exhaust fans at the back. Like I mentioned previously, this works in conjunction with the chamber temperature regulation. If you want to print with PLA, you do not need to open a door. You have a little slide vent on the top. The machine's very clever. The UI, so the screen, will ask you to check if you're printing with PLA, have you opened the vents? You can check, you've opened the vents, and you click continue. It reminds you. It does the same with PETG as well. By getting a high ambient chamber temperature with those materials, you could run the risk of getting clogs in your extruder because the filament will become naturally soft 
as it's going into the extruder, the gears then can't grip it, which then causes in an ugly mess that you don't want any part of. We also have a flexible build plate, standard size. So this is a compatible build plate from the Mark IV, Mark IV S to the core one. Any of those build plates fit any of those machines. So you don't need to switch out. If you've got you know, a few build plates from your old Mark IV or your Mark IV S, you can sit confidently knowing that they will fit straight into the core one. The machine is equipped with two lots of lighting. We have an LED light bar, which is just on the back of this metal cross brace here. And we also have an LED status bar, which is located on the bottom of the build plate. So basically the, the one on the build plate, it'll indicate the status while the machine's printing. It'll also let you know when it's finished, which is quite a handy little touch. Another added feature with the Core 1, for those of you who are familiar with the enclosure from the Mark IV or the Mark IV S and whatever, you will know that they are stackable. The reason for them being stackable is because people that use these in print farms or enclosed spaces and have more than one machine need to conserve every inch of space they have available. Prusa again have really about thought about this. So these are stackable. You can stack, I think, up to five core ones on top of each other. The way that the feet are actually situated it won't block the vents. There's risers that you can print off if you wanted to give it a little bit more clearance. You can absolutely stack these on top of each other. So you could have a whole wall full of core ones and you know where to buy them from. Check out the link in the description. All of the components that Prusa used to create the core one were very, very similar materials. So for those of you who don't know how critical this small insight could be, it's quite drastic. If you were to have steel frame aluminium components inside the machine, when I say components, I mean structural parts, and you're heating the chamber, i.e. heat soaking it for ABS, for instance, you want everything to heat consistently and evenly because then the expansion is equal across the whole area that's being heated. If you were to put in a mixture of materials, those ex rates of expansion would be very, very different. So basically, in simple terms, you would put the machine potentially out of square, out of kilter, which would cause you problems in print quality, reliability, and all of that stuff. Prusa, again, have thought this through. Everything is made from steel. So all of the main chassis components and frame components are steel. So they'll all act in the same way when they are being heat soaked giving you unrivaled print quality. Another thumbs up. Let's move on. Firmware and the screen. So, as I've already mentioned, the screen has a rotary knob with a clicking function to select the option that you want, or you can use it as a touch screen. We also have the capability now with the built-in NFC chip on the back of the machine to connect your mobile phone to connect to the Wi-Fi network. This will then allow you to use Prusa Connect and there's another new phone functional app. I'm not quite sure what the name is, but we will find that and put that on screen and that allows you to actually slice files now and send them from your phone or tablet, which is another handy feature if you want just quickly, bish bash bosh, you're not at home, you know your printer's on and empty, make sure it's always empty and there's filament loaded of course because otherwise it won't do anything and it'll just give you a message saying please load filament but you can remotely send files no matter where you are if you're not on the same network you can still send them via your phone which is another very very handy addition you have a couple of safety features so when you open the door the printer pauses stops flashes lights at you and tells you to close the door to resume printing which is very very handy feature to have if you are in say for instance, a school or a college where you don't want kids putting their hands into moving parts where they could potentially get trapped. It's very, very good. It'll literally open up. There's a little limit switch that triggers the, the alarm or whatever. It'll pause printing, so it stops everything dead in its tracks and it won't resume until the door's shut. In the actual UI, you can disable this, so you can turn it off if you want to open the door and do whatever you need to do while the printer is printing. This machine also supports fully offline printing. So for those of you who are a little bit more skeptical about retaining 
your Prince IP or anything like that, please, please, please don't worry because this machine has that covered. You can print perfectly offline. You do not need to be connected to a Wi-Fi network to use this machine. You can simply upload the file to the USB stick, pop it in the printer, press print. Totally secure. We have printed material wise on this machine. Let me think anything and everything. We have literally tried our best to use and abuse this machine until it would not be abused anymore. And all I can say is it kept on begging for more. We've put PLA, PETG, ABS, ASA, PC, ASACF, PCCF, all through this machine. I think we've even done TPU as well. And it prints everything that you throw at it without fault. And I'm talking like literally there is minimal, minimal tuning required to get anything to print on this machine. And I've printed filaments on here that I even improved the slicer and done them under generic settings and they've just worked. A couple of instances I might have had to slightly tweak the nozzle temperature by five degrees or so to, to get the best out of the filament that I was using. But overall, this machine has just done nothing but surprise us time and time and time again. We printed some Prusa parts. So one of the parts that I wanted to replace on um, our Mark IVs was the actual Z-axis mounting bracket where the belts and everything fit. So I printed a replacement part in ASA CF. Now, all I can say is orientation wise, dumped on the build plate like that in this machine, no supports, default settings, the finish of this part if you were looking at it really really closely you would be able to tell it was 3d printed if you were looking at it from a distance you would swear it was injection molded it is absolutely ridiculous we also printed a nice little pla gladiator in our own brand glitter gold the link for that will be in the description it printed absolutely fantastically the details and the overhangs and everything on this were faultless. Obviously the obligatory Prusa Robo Llama in their infamous Galaxy Black PLA. You can't pick fault with it at all. Some PC parts for LDO kit that we're thinking about constructing sometime in the future. Printed flat on the build plate. It is ridiculous how well this printed. There's little cable tie channels here and there's no supports in there and you could fish a cable tie through there absolutely fine. The holes are perfectly round, very, very minimal drooping where, where we've had the, the heat that high to print the PC. Very, very functional flat parts. There's no warping or anything like that. Filament storage units. So in white PLA, absolutely perfect. There is not a single thing wrong with that print. Some Voron parts that we've printed, I believe this was ASA CF. Clicks together as it should do. The tolerances and everything from this machine, what you'd expect from Prusa. Perfecto. We printed some functional parts for another project that we're working on. This is actually for the MMU unit, it's for the auto retract spool holders. This is printed in Prusamon in their infamous orange. Again, the tolerance is absolutely perfect. There is no play in that thread at all, but it spins like a dream. The only reports we've actually had back that have been negative in some aspects regarding this machine is in a couple of instances a customer may have received one where it was failing to do the self setup on the homing. All it turns out to be is the belt tension isn't quite equally balanced. So a little bit of tweaking which the screws for the belt tension in are literally right behind the door in these little holes here. So you literally get your tool, tighten the belt until you get equal resonance with your sound meter and you, you, you're golden, you're good to go. That is the only real issue that we've had, but it's a dead simple fix. You know, it takes seconds of your time and it will become part of your routine maintenance because yes, these machines do have consumable items in them that will need servicing, will need replacing. That's part and parcel. You don't own a car, and expect to run it for 200,000 miles without taking it to the garage for a service because it just wouldn't last that long if you didn't. No different with the 3D printer, guys. No different whatsoever. <music> so 
So my final thoughts on this machine. If you are in the market for a consistently reliable quality product that produces results that you can stand back and look at in amazement, look no further. The Core One is the one for you. <laughs> No, seriously, like a lot of people that we, we deal with on a daily basis will ask for, you know, my recommendations, honest opinions and everything else. The first question is I ask, how much do you want to spend? What are you looking to do with the machine? Because yes, I understand budget is a big part of everybody's life. But what I will say, I always try and advise people to buy the best that you can afford to buy because in the long run, that will save you money. Ultimately, if you were to go out and buy a cheaper lower end machine it would vastly become out of date very very quickly you do not have that problem with prusa guys they are constantly evolving they are constantly releasing upgrades updates so as they proved with the mark IV, they released the mark IV S. they then offered a mark IV S upgrade kit to everybody that owned the mark 3.9 and the mark IV. so that machine was not obsolete you just upgraded the parts that they changed and you've got the latest version of that machine. They've done exactly the same with the Core 1. If you've got a Mark IV or a Mark IV S, you can upgrade that to a Core 1. So you salvage all the parts from your Mark IV, you build this from those parts. It's an evolutionary process. It will cost you a little bit in the upgrade kits, but ultimately you've got a machine that's going to last you for a good amount of time. So it's not a consumable item, it's an investment, and an investment that will last you prove to be reliable and in the long run will save you money and very very possibly even make you money so that is a worthy you know worthwhile consideration to actually sit down and think about that before you just jump in feet first and buy the cheapest machine because you think that is the one for you but honestly overall Prusa sat back they watched what the market were doing everything else was available in the market all of those machines flaws they looked at them they addressed them they incorporated those improvements into this machine and then release the core one honestly it is it's a solid machine it is made to last and it won't see you go wrong so i am going to leave that with you so if you are interested in this machine the prusa core one or any other of prusa's range of products please check out the link in the description because they are all available Yes, all available guys at 1233D. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have got any questions about this machine or any other machine, please do drop them in the comments below. We will do our utmost to answer you as quickly as possible. And please do not forget to like, subscribe, and if you really want to, share. Goodbye for now. We'll see you on the next one. As always, we aim to have the most competitive 3D printer prices on the market. If you see any of our printers being sold by a mainstream retailer for less, please drop us an email using the link in the description and we'll do our very best to beat their price. Also, if you're watching from outside the UK, check the description for links to our European 123 3D sister stores.